Uh, Rupert, why do you think, or in fact, no, I remember you saying in one interview, um, what makes you think a scientist is qualified to make observations about the nature of reality, whereas someone interested in the nature of consciousness is not? And I remember the answer to your question was, was not a particularly satisfactory one. So can we just flip that back round? And what makes someone interested in the nature of reality, like yourself, qualified to make observations about the nature of reality in the same way that scientists with their interest, instruments and technologies, et cetera, are? Because all the research that a scientist does... Uh, they, they do with their, the faculties of their mind, namely the faculties of thought and perception. And reality cannot be known through the mind, through thought and perception. So that there's a lot that scientists can and obviously do do with their minds. But the one thing that no scientist um, will ever do, and indeed no person will ever do, is know the nature of reality through the faculties of their mind. Why? Because our minds impose their own limitations on everything that they know or perceive. In other words, the mind looks at reality, but reality appears to that mind in accordance with its own limitations, just as one who looks at snow through orange tinted glasses they are looking at the snow but the snow will appear orange why because of the lens through which they perceive it all science and this may be true of uh, most scientists un unlike the introspective ones like don who who also meditate but the vast majority of science scientists investigate reality with their minds. It's the wrong tool. By, by the mind, I mean our conceiving and perceiving faculties. That's not to say that the, the, the work a scientist done, does with thought and, and perception is not valid. Of course, it's immensely valid, but it's not the right tool for researching reality. So th th that is why um, somebody who's not a scientist or doesn't use their mind in a scientific way by scientific, I mean the conventional definition of the word scientific, is equally qualified to explore the nature of reality, as is a, someone with a, a scientifically trained mind. So when people talk about the hard problem of consciousness, as they have done for decades, um, I, 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 what's your take? Yes, the, the hard. I think the days of the debate about the hard problem of consciousness are, are numbered. There is no hard problem of consciousness. What's really interesting is the hard problem of matter. And that's a really interesting question. The hard problem of consciousness is, 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 is uh, like, like the problem of how screens are generated by movies, how the sky is generated by clouds, how the ocean is generated by waves. That, that's the hard problem of consciousness. The answer is, it's not. It, it, it's based on a massive assumption, namely that, that uh, matter is the fundamental reality of the universe. And uh, as, as Don very well described the hard problem of consciousness, that matter eventually uh, gives rise to consciousness. It, it, it's in time, I, I think in the not too distant future, we will, we will view um, this perspective in the same way that we now look back on the flat earth theory or the, the um, geocentric universe theory, the, the, the theory that the sun travels around the earth. The, 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 the idea that matter is the fundamental reality of the universe and gives rise to consciousness will find its place alongside these kinds of ideas. So, but what's really interesting, if consciousness is the fundamental reality, how then does uh, the, the, the apparently physical world contained in time and space, how does that arise from consciousness? That's the hard problem of, of matter. That's a really interesting question. Yes, it is. I'm wondering to what degree you share Rupert's optimism 
um, Don, because I've heard you talk about 99% of your colleagues still having a physicalist outlook. I remember speaking to Carlo Ravelli, he said the same thing. Um, and so from those kind of statistics, 99%, that doesn't suggest that a uh, sea change is coming in imminently. Uh, I agree. I think it's going to take a while, but but I'm pretty confident that that's going to happen because uh, human beings, scientists in particular, are just as dogmatic as anybody else on the planet. But science as a institution, a social institution, is not dogmatic. It may be slow to change its views, but it's not dogmatic because eventually uh, data will overwhelm our our biases, and the the new theories will will overwhelm our biases. So, for example. Uh, in 1905, uh, it was over for Newton as being the fundamental theory of physics. It was over. But 17 years later, when, when Einstein won the Nobel Prize in physics, um, the Nobel Committee was very, very clear that it was not for his theory of space-time. Uh, it, it wasn't for his theory that overthrew Newton. It was for something else. It was, it was uh, um, Something in quantum theory, the, the photoelectric effect. So, the so what happened was it took a long time for even the Nobel Prize Committee to respect and and believe Einstein's theory, even though it had already predicted, uh, you know, the change of the position of stars in a, in a solar eclipse and so forth. They they were not convinced. Well, everybody is convinced now, but but you can see that even if it's it, it's a genius like Einstein who has made what we now know to be a, 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 one of the biggest contributions of all time. It takes the science a little while to, you know, a few decades to catch up, but, but the, eventually it does. So I'm, I'm quite confident that, you know, like, like this year's Nobel prize for the experimental verification that uh, local realism is false. That's just another clean nail in the coffin of space time and physicalism. And, and so, so, I'm, I'm convinced, by the way, that as an uh, idealist framework starts to solve the hard problem of matter that, that Rupert was just talking about, where we start with a, a mathematical model, for example, of consciousness, and then show how um, precisely uh, quantum field theory arises as a projection of the dynamics of, of consciousness, um, then I think um, things will turn around because when you can start building new technology based on the on the on the new science that that doesn't assume that space and time and physical objects are fundamental, then all of a sudden you're you're a luddite if you if you, if you still believe in space and time you 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 you've you've been left behind and so I think that's what's going to happen is that there will be a new theory of and it's already happening um, there are physicists you know. Uh, Nimar, Connie Hamed, and others who are finding new structures beyond space-time. So the race is already on. Space-time is is not just that we're saying that space-time is doomed. There are new structures beyond space-time that that are being found, and eventually we're going to get new technology that goes around space-time. And when we have technology that goes around space-time and doesn't require the existence of matter, then all of a sudden um, y y y you're not going to be the smart one in the room if you if you think that space-time is is fundamental. You'll you'll be the you know the one that was left behind.